Good afternoon, welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Sonal Bhutra and with me is Mangalam Malu and these are the top headlines that we are tracking on Midcap Radar. Midcap trade mostly in line with large peers as the market edge is lower, erasing early gains. Pharma surges, IT shows strength. Shah Metallics jumps after it acquires stainless steel maker Mittal Corp and draws up big cap expand. The management tells CNBC TV18 it expects a revenue of 2,000 crore rupees from the new plant as well as the full capacity next year. You know, Minda perks up on a technology alliance with Ascentech for Korea for wheel speed sensors. City Union Bank recovers slightly after sliding in early trade after RBI's audit assesses the NBA numbers to be higher than reported by the bank. The stock, however, is still down over 5%. Diagnostics chains in focus after a resurgence in COVID cases globally. Dr. Path Labs, Path Labs uh, Metropolis Health and Vijaya Diagnostics gain between 4 to 8 percent. Some diagnostics firms, though, say they do not expect testing to rise as of now. All right, those are the top headlines. The markets, by the way, are at the days, though. There's a sharp fall from the top is what we are seeing, a 115-point downtick uh, on the Nifty, and that's almost a 300-point uh, downtick that we are seeing from the top today. And the uh, mid-cap index, which was outperforming so far, that index was up around 100-odd points, and a sharp fall there as well, 200 points gone just there as well. So at the days low, and among um, we were discussing this, whether we will be able to continue the strength, at least in the mid-cap side of things that we are seeing, but that hasn't happened. That hasn't happened. And you know, it's interesting because the COVID cases, and that actually tells you the story of the day. We had more stocks advancing than declining. Then the, there was a bit of a congestion zone. And thereafter, those lines are far apart. Uh, the increasing COVID cases, and there's, this is the trend. It, it takes us back to what we would witness earlier, right? You know, when the COVID cases were mm -hmm. higher, etc. You had all the diagnostic uh, stocks do extremely well. So Metropolis uh, and Dr. Lal Pat Labs, like you spoke about. But on the flip side, just keep an eye out on, say, a lot of these uh, outdoor things, hotel companies. We're talking about people traveling, etc. But if this was the fear, then, you know, the trade would play out similarly mm -hmm. as well. Indian hotels at right. the low point of trade with a cut of 5%. PVR, again, down 3 odd percent. We have uh, a bunch of other, uh, you know, Trent, for instance, should come out, uh, come up for you, down almost 3 odd percent at the low point. Lemon Tree Hotels lower as well. Trent is, uh, again, an outdoor retail player. So when we were playing that mm. unlock, uh, lock-in trade, etc., seems like it's, it's back again. I mean, I hope it isn't. Yes, But exactly. the fears of that are... Uh, what, what the street is playing for. Let's uh, hope that's not for longer and these this is just a one-time thing that we are seeing right now but the stock's definitely under a lot of pressure on the back of all the news that we are getting globally. For now, let's get uh, a technical check on the markets. The stocks are declining, so is the market. Manish Hathiramani of Deen Daya Investments is joining us now. Um, Manish, what's really playing out here? We are seeing a sharp fall from the top. Uh, uh, are the charts suggesting further weakness from here? Good afternoon, Sonal and to Mangalam. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Well, I continue to feel that the Nifty has entered a bearish trajectory. Uh, 18,300 was really a range bound on the lower side and 18,687 on the upper side. We have broken 18,300. However, we've not been feeling the gush on the downside because the last two days have been a little choppy. However, the trend continues to be negative. I still feel we can come down to 18,000. Thereafter, the next level to look out will be 17,875 to be precise. Unless we don't really get past the levels of 18,500, I don't see any reason why we should be going long. The trend will continue remaining short. All right. And in terms of individual stocks, there are divergent trends. Uh, as we just noticed, we do have a bunch of stocks which are doing well and a bunch which are not doing well. What are your thoughts? Are you doing a long short strategy then, Manish? Well, I would be working with three picks from the mid-cap space. The first one is a sell on Union Bank for a target of 78.50, stop loss of 89. This stock has broken the support of 90 on the back of high volumes. 83.50 was another support which we recently disrespected. The second sell is on JSW Energy for a sell target of 265, stop loss of 290. This stock has been in a downtrend ever since it broke 330. This is really a mid-trend entry for a lower target. The last is on Grell Infra for a target of 139, stop loss of 155. This stock has been trading below the supports of 150. The charts continue to suggest a fall in price with inclining volumes, which is a negative sign. All in all, three cell calls from my side. 
cell calls. Okay, Manish, thank you so much for joining us and taking us through your individual technical picks and the technical outlook on different indices as well. Let's move on and focus on our segment, mid-caps movers. Definitely mid-caps are the favor, flavor of the day-to-day, -day, uh, are underperforming suddenly. We have Vivek to take us through the mid-caps that are moving around in trade. Vivek? Well, uh, thank you so much for that. Clearly, you know, it's a risk of sentiment that we are seeing. And, you know, just like Mangalam mentioned at the start of the show, you know, some of the themes that we saw, some of the stocks that we saw reacting, you know, when the initial wave of COVID broke out, those are the stocks that we are looking at again. Today, clearly, uh, you know, you are seeing buying as far as some of the defensive space is concerned, along with that rising API prices, you know, the anticipated demand as far as uh, things like ibuprofen are keeping uh, pharma stocks in very active in the session. You saw some of the names earlier, Denmark Pharma, Morpen, Panacea, Biotech, all of these stocks are surging in today's trading session. Now, looking at some of the stocks that we have, especially, uh, you know, that have triggered the volume limits of, Stovecraft today is up on very strong volumes. Phenolex Industries as well as KDDL. These are some of the stocks uh, that are doing, you know, seeing very strong volumes today. After a while, we're seeing Manapuram Finance uh, outperform, and even Skipper continues a strong surge. This particular stock has been on it uh, for the last couple of uh, months, in fact. Uh, on the other hand, what we're seeing is a, you're seeing clear profit booking trends as far as the third pack is concerned. So Madras Fertilizer, you know, even National Fertilizers today have seen a bit of profit booking. GICRE after the 60% almost rally, today we are seeing a bit of profit booking. And you know, also some names like IHCL and uh, you know, some of Lementary, these are some of the stocks that are seeing a bit of a breakdown in today's trading session. All right, we take that point, uh, Vivek. Thanks a lot for that. With that, uh, we take a short break. Uh, on the other side, we get chatting with the management of Rajesh, uh, uh, management of Insecticides India. Rajesh Agarwal obviously joins in to discuss the CapEx plans that the company has recently announced. Welcome back. Uh, the mid-cap index is now firmly underperforming, down with a cut of almost uh, three quarters of a percent. Nifty Bank down almost a percent. But now uh, let's talk about some of the big movers. Uh, we have uh, uh, Insecticides India, and this year itself it's up almost 60 odd percent, notwithstanding uh, uh, you know the weakness that we are seeing in the markets right now, and the stock lower by about three odd rupees. In its recent investor presentation, the company noted that it's headed towards premiumization and expects revenues of over. 150 crores coming in from exports by the end of FY23. On the capacity expansion front as well, their technical synthesis plant is expected to start production this quarter. So to discuss all of this and the company's CapEx plan and revenue targets, we have with us Rajesh Agarwal, the managing director of the company. Thanks a lot, Rajesh, uh, for joining in. Uh, you know, uh, of all the announcements that you've made, you've spoken at length about uh, the expansion plans at five locations. Uh, one of them, of course, will start in the third quarter itself. What exactly is the total opportunity that we're talking about here? And will there at some point be a pause once this is done so that you reap the benefits of this CapEx? Uh, uh, we have aggressive planning, actually. So we are expanding in Rajasthan. We are ex expanding in Gujarat. So uh, in the technical synthesis plant, yes, uh, we have invested in uh, Rajasthan. And uh, this plant is going to start production soon. So uh, rather, uh, some of the portion has already started and will be full-fledged in full uh, production by the end of this month. So by the end of December, the technical plant, uh, the expansion of about 35 watt reactors will be fully uh, operational. And in early next quarter, I also see the Dahish plant starting its production in the new plant where we have added 70 watt reactors. So I mean to say that company has made a big expansion of about 100 watt reactors in the technical synthesis. And all these facilities are going to start their production full-fledgedly and will be ready for the new year in a big way. Okay, when you say you will be, you are going very aggressive in your expansion plans, is that it, as Manglam asked, or will you be looking at further expansion plans after these five uh, expansion plans that you just mentioned in your investor presentation? And uh, yeah. if yes, what kind of expansion plans do you have in place? What will be the opportunity revenues from these uh, locations or these projects itself? Okay. 
So uh, along with this, we are also planning to expand at uh, two more locations. One is for the exports. Exports, we have our plant in SCZ, which we made three years back. We are looking for expansion, but the land is, uh, the procurement has not happened. We are looking at the adjoining land opportunity. And along with this, we have also signed a contract for a, a plant in Sotanala, which is uh, Bahrod uh, area, which we are planning to buy. And this plant, we wish to start with formulations. And in the later phases, after consolidating our formulations, we go for technical plant expansion also. Here, we also wish to uh, do some biological activities through our newly found biological company, which is a 100% subsidiary of insecticide me, known as IL Biologicals. Right. So we wish to start the operations for this company also at Sotanala. So, so what... that way, it will be continuously big plans. So you have already shown on the screen that there will be a target of 100 crores plus of expansion in the, in the Sotanala plant and some other small expansions, which we are planning in other areas. And mm -hmm. we'll be finishing our expansions in Dahej and Chopanki in general. Okay, so 110 crore of capex is what you had planned. What will the asset turn on this be? What what Sorry. what yeah. kind of uh, revenues do you expect from the capex that uh, you have made? We, we believe that we should be able to uh, make a, 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 like to grow at a CAGR of 25 percent roughly with these expansions, and this will continue because a lot of expansion is already made. And this will give a good good growth. So at the moment, I'm trying to keep the targets reasonable by saying 25%. All right. Uh, um, I mean, the first half of this year, you've done uh, almost 1,100-odd crores. So even if we double that, you know, close to around 2,200-odd crores, 25% of that would be roughly 550 to 600-odd crores. So does this mean with this 110-crore uh, capex that you're doing, you would realize revenues of oh, a little over 400-500 crores? Is that a rough, uh, you know, uh, assumption? Is that is that broadly in line? Our business is a cyclic business, so being cyclic, for us, first half is the big, big half and second half is the smaller half. Mm -hmm. In first half itself, we do about 60% plus business and balance 40% comes from the second half. So we'll not see this growth coming in the itself. But in the next financial year, you will see this growth from first quarter itself. So when I'm talking about 25% growth, yes, in the first half, we have grown by almost 25% in this year. And I believe that we'll be able to maintain this growth for this fiscal. And in the years to come, like in the next two, three years also, I see a CAGR of 25% plus happening actually due to these expansions. And from new launches, you did about 73 crores in uh, FY22. Uh, you plan to launch about six, seven new products this year as well. How much will yes. that be as a contributor to your revenues this year? New products uh, totally? Uh, new products, I don't have the exact numbers. We'll be announcing the numbers with the third quarter results. But yes, they are doing pretty well. So the new products uh, which were launched before this year and two, three, four products which have come during this year also, they have done pretty well actually. And uh, uh, they are converting into the big brands and we are going to expand these brands in the new fiscal itself uh, also. Oh, okay. Yes, there are another six, seven products by pipeline, which we'll be launching shortly, actually, in the next three to four months for the new season. Okay. You're also in process of uh, increasing or initiating registrations in highly regulated markets, the likes of Europe, you're talking about Brazil, USA. But, you know, the conversations that I've had with other agrochemical companies, the point is that these registrations are really costly. Does that mean when you get into it, that part of cost will really increase for you. What kind of uh, capex will you put in registration costs? Uh, we have been investing continuously for last uh, uh, many years, actually. So this is the investment which is happening for more than six, seven years. So since uh, it's a continuous investment, so the uh, expense has divided over various years, actually. And uh, uh, it is not a hit on the balance sheet, which will be appearing on uh, every year, uh, like it, at one go. So since we have been investing on various product registrations, so it's a continuous expense. So nothing big will appear actually at one go. So we invest about two to three crores on data generation every year. And this, this has been the part of that. All right. Finally, then uh, exports, uh, you had targeted 150 crores this year. Are you on track to achieve that? And secondly, uh, next year going forward, because of the capex, etc., will the contribution of exports increase? Yeah, definitely the contribution of export is going to increase. Uh, this, there was a little slowdown in between because of the currency issues uh, in the different parts of the world. So, but I still think that we should be able to touch our target of 150 crores in this uh, year because already I have my order book is full actually. And so I believe we should be able to deliver these orders. You said contribution of exports will increase. How much will that increase to? Uh, no, uh, increase means uh, I should be able to match 150 crores. This year, no. 
But next year, yes, I see a growth of 30-40% coming out of exports also. Okay. 30-40% right. growth in the export markets next year. Mr. Agrawal, thanks a lot for joining us and talking about business and demand in general as well. With that, we'll slip into a short break. Up next, we'll be focusing on Glenmark Pharma in our special segment, Mid-Cap Spotlight. Stay tuned. Still tune into Midcap Radar on CNBC TV 18. Well, while the Midcap Index continues to languish at the day's low, there are a couple of uh, bright spots in the broader markets, and this is our Midcap Spotlight segment. Ekta is focusing on Glenmark Pharma. The stock is up 7% in a week. Market Ekta, what's happening here? Well, yes, uh, you know, Glenmark Pharmaceuticals is in focus because they've launched a triple fixed dose combination drug, which is basically for diabetes. The drug contains three components, which is tenilegliptin, uh, pioglitazone, as well as metformin. Now, the drug is used for type 2 diabetes as well as high insulin resistance. It is launched under the brand name Zeta Pyomet. Now, why exactly is Glenmark probably buzzing on the back of this is that it is one of the first companies, or rather the first company to launch this combination of the drug, which is why it is a fixed dose combination in India as well as in other uh, as well as um, probably in other markets the market is for oral diabetic drugs is expected to be quite large already in India it's close to around 12,000 odd crores and is expected to be growing at around 6.3 percent uh, Glenmark has been at the forefront in terms of launching diabetes drugs in the Indian market and has been launching multiple drugs since 2015 this would be a part of their portfolio and it seems as though the uh, the street is optimistic because um, one, it is within the diabetes portfolio where they have been quite active. It is a formulation which is uh, where the, it is the only company which has launched it. And it is in a market which uh, is largely expected to be growing in double digits, which is the Indian formulation market. All right, take that uh, point. Take that. Thanks a lot for that. Glenmark is the one which is doing well. And across the board, we do have uh, a bunch of stocks uh, from uh, the pharmaceutical space itself doing extremely well. But let's... Uh, Shift focus to the mutual fund uh, world right now. Pavitra is standing by the big wall with some interesting data on asset ownerships and scheme contribution trends. Uh, Pavitra, what have you? Thanks a lot for that. Well, we have been going through the mutual fund data, and while there has been a steady rise in total assets managed, we have picked up some interesting trends. First up, let me just put the broad numbers for you up on the screen. So the total assets managed this month came in at 40.5 crores, uh, 40.5 trillion rupees. This is for the month of November. And this versus November of last year, when we actually saw 38.5%. So there has been a 5.1% uh, kind of move that we've seen. Now comes the interesting part. Assets held by individual investors increased more than 10.5% in this period. So we have a figure of 23.34 lakh crore for this year. This is versus the 21 lakh crore that we saw in November of 2021. Compare this to what's going on with assets held by institutions because you're seeing quite the opposite trend play out. Institutions held 17.36 lakh crores. This is in November of last year. And this has now slipped to 17.15 lakh crores. So while individual investments are on the rise, like you can see it's up, you know, 10.5%, institution holding has declined and it's down 1.2% versus last year. So that is the first trend that we're looking at. Another interesting fact that we noticed is that equity scheme contribution to total assets has been going up. So last year in November, the contribution was at 48%. And this, you can see, slowly has moved up to 51.7%. This is the contribution from equity schemes. Now, while this has been going up, on the other hand, debt schemes have seen the opposite contribution. So contribution is down from 28.5% last year. And it's currently at just around 19%. So the current pie, if you take a look at the whole thing, it has a big chunk, around 48%, which is from equity schemes, 19% from debt schemes, and the rest are ETFs, FOFs, as well as liquid funds. To wrap up, I'm just going to go through the trends again. First, the AUM is rising across the board for the industry. Assets held by individual investors are going up, but those held by institutions have come down. 
And lastly, equity scheme contribution is rising, but debt scheme contribution is declining. With that, guys, it's back to you. Okay, interesting pointers there, uh, Patra. Thank you so much for highlighting them for us. So that's the trends. Uh, those are the trends that we are seeing in the mutual fund industry. However, if we look at the equity markets, the weakness continues. Bank Nifty is down 700 points as we speak. So important trading day at the day's low, and Nifty has further slipped there, 180 points lower on the Nifty as we speak. That's all we have on Midcap Radar. Your stocks when we return.